Welcome to Unpacking Armenian Studies. This is a limited podcast series of the University of Southern California Institute of Armenian Studies. We're calling this series Ukraine, Armenia, and War because there are, of course, many overlaps, many intersections, and at the end of the day, this war today impacts the world, Armenia and the Caucasus included. Thus far, I've spoken with journalists and scholars, and today I will be speaking, uh, thankfully, and I'm grateful to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Armenia for making this possible, I will be speaking to Armenia's ambassador to Ukraine, His Excellency Vladimir Karabedian, who is going to be speaking with us, not from Kiev, the capital, but from Lviv or, or Lvov in uh, Western Ukraine. Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, let's start with what you've seen, but first tell us, you're not in Kiev, you're in Lvov or Lviv. Mm -hmm. When did you get there? Why did you get there? Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite understandable uh, since the uh, beginning of the war, uh, which started on 24th of uh, February. Uh, and even before that, uh, many embassies uh, uh, moved uh, out of Kiev. Uh, among them, uh, United States Embassy, uh, many embassies of uh, from European Union countries. Uh, we, uh, of course, uh, having uh, plans uh, to remove, but uh, decided to stay longer uh, to be in. Uh, contact with the uh, Armenian community, with those who are who in need of our assistance uh, in these very hard days. Uh, uh, besides, we were in daily contact with uh, Ukrainian foreign ministry, with, with our uh, foreign ministry. But uh, on March 2nd, uh, the decision has been made by the leadership of the foreign ministry and we moved uh, to a safer place. Many embassies are now uh, located in Lviv, uh, in uh, the western part of uh, Ukraine. Uh, I can't say that it's completely safe here and everyone heard uh, about uh, uh, strikes made a couple of days ago. But uh, um, then we are here and a lot of embassies, international organizations also uh, opened uh, offices, temporarily offices here in Lviv. Um, there are, I don't know if this is the right way to describe it, but it seems to me there are three levels, kinds of Armenian community in Ukraine. There are mm -hmm. the old Armenians from a thousand years ago. There are the Armenians who moved there in the Soviet years. And then there are those who moved in the post-independence years. Is that right? And can you talk about them, especially about the older uh, Armenian presence in Ukraine? Yes, um, you know, Ukraine is quite a big country, especially compared with uh, Armenia. And uh, Armenians here spread all over the country, uh, uh, living uh, everywhere uh, from eastern part uh, like uh, Kharkiv, Dnieper, uh, central park like in Kiev, Cherkasy, and of course, uh, uh, western part of the country. Uh, according to some assumption, up to 500,000 Armenians now uh, are living uh, in Ukraine. Part of them uh, are Ukrainian citizens already. Part of them are still possess uh, Armenian uh, passports. Yes, uh, you're right. Uh, Armenians are here uh, almost uh, thousand years. They established here uh, in medieval centuries. After the fall of Ani, right? That's the story? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, besides uh, in medieval uh, years, centuries, uh, it was um, 
trade route uh, going uh, through western part of Ukraine, and we Armenians established very um, famous cities like uh, Kamenets Podolsk. Uh, they were present in Lviv as well, uh, and um, uh, Mother Church of Armenian uh, here is uh, situated in Lviv, uh, which has been built in 17th century. Uh, um, so, uh, Mr. Ambassador, is that the church where either old cultural and religious artifacts were moved into for safety? Exactly. What was that? So we have three, by the way, uh, sculptures, uh, which uh, we are trying to save these days. The cathedral holds two wonder-working icons of St. Gregory, the Illuminator, and the Mother of God, uh, brought in the 17th century from Yalovets. Uh, we are wrapping uh, these sculptures with uh, fireproof cloths, glass wool, and then special foil. And fi finally, are putting special sacks on them. This will not save uh, the figure if there is a direct hit, but if there will be power strike, uh, uh, they will be safe from being dismantled. But another uh, wooden sculpture under protection of UNESCO, Jesus Christ sculpture is dismantled. And uh, now uh, it's uh, the statue will be stored in bomb shelter for the duration of the whole war. Did you say these are in Kiev? No, no, in Lviv. Lviv, in Lviv. Uh, uh, Armenian church in Lviv. In Lviv, I see, I see. Yes. So that's what is being done to help and save the artifacts. Oh, what about the community? What do they need? What can you do for them? What is the humanitarian situation? Let me tell you that uh, we have quite united and structured uh, Armenian com community here. Uh, the, one of the main organization of that community is uh, Union of Armenians in Ukraine. Uh, from the first days, uh, they were very organized, uh, helping uh, people uh, and to save uh, themselves, helping uh, them to evacuate. Uh, and now uh, this work continues, and we are embassy. Uh, uh, in close cooperation with uh, these Armenian structures all over the Ukraine and uh, by daily work, uh, trying to uh, evacuate those Armenians who are in need of, in need of that. Uh, by the way, uh, Foreign Ministry of Armenia had a special agreement uh, with uh, neighboring countries, European Union countries like uh, Poland, Hungary, Rum Romania, and Slovakia, and citizens of Armenia now can move to these countries without visa, uh, thanks to this agreement. Uh, so uh, this daily work uh, continues and we are trying to do our best. What other needs do these refugees have, including financial? And is there anything that can be done there? Transportation is expensive. Um, what is that situation? Yes, uh, of course, um, I told you that uh, they spread our community, our people spread all over the country. So uh, I can't say that it's possible to gather everyone in one city uh, or to help with uh, evacuation. At the same time, most of people are evacuating through uh, two major Western cities like Lviv and Ushgorod. In both cities, we open consulates, uh, temporary consulates, and together with uh, Armenian community structures located in uh, Western part of Ukraine, we help them uh, to with documents 
as well as when there is need uh, with uh, transportation means and other needs that they may have. Are there uh, trade and economic relations between Ukraine and Armenia that are being impacted by this situation? Are there businessmen who are impacted? Um, I would um, point only on uh, bilateral uh, economic relations because uh, uh, in general, economic activities uh, with, uh, with the whole world from Ukraine is stopped and uh, there is no trade almost, there is no trade with the main partners. There is only one way, uh, East, the western part of Ukraine is safe for trade. Uh, there is no flights, of course. Uh, so, of course, there is, I can't say that uh, we can continue any ec economic activities um, these days uh, with Armenia. Uh, now, it, what is going here uh, is real war. And uh, uh, as uh, put uh, president and prime minister of Ukraine, economics also works as it should work on war days. So it's special uh, situation for, for the country the, and for the country's economy. The, um, the Armenians of Ukraine, um, mm -hmm. do they identify, you said, of course, some still have Armenian passport, but for those who are citizens, mm -hmm. do they identify mm -hmm. as Ukrainian? It's quite interesting question. Uh, Look, um, those who possess uh, Ukrainian passport, most of them uh, identify themselves as uh, citizens of Ukraine. They freely speak Armenia, uh, Armenian uh, habits also, Armenians. Uh, at the same time, uh, it's not worthy to mention the statement of uh, Union of Armenians in Ukraine, which was very, very pro-Ukrainian. Uh, and uh, as the one who followed uh, how this uh, statement was drafted, uh, just hearing the position of uh, representatives from various regions, uh, Eastern, Central and Western of Ukraine, I noticed that everyone shares uh, the same position. So uh, my question is that both, they feel themselves uh, as purely Armenians, but uh, those who have uh, uh, Ukrainian passport feel themselves as uh, citizens of Ukraine as well. I am, um, I would like to ask about the, the situation um, in the diplomatic community to the extent that there is anything that you can share. Um, is it everybody keeping their heads down and just working th through every day? By the way, every day, let me ask you that as well. Uh, what was your day like today? Oh, I told you that, uh... Some embassies started to move uh, from Kiev uh, even before uh, war, some 10 days, uh, one week uh, before that. Um, part of them are located in uh, Lvov. Lviv. Uh, some of them, uh, some of embassies now out of country, like in Moldova, uh, Romania, uh, Poland. Um, Armenia was one of the last embassies that uh, moved from uh, Kiev. Now uh, I would tell you that uh, there is uh, some community of embassies now in Lviv. Uh, um, we are in contact uh, with uh, most of them. Of course, everyone is uh, busy very much as we are. Uh, helping uh, citizens of uh, their countries to survive, to evacuate when there is need of that. 
but political consultations, uh, diplomatic life continues and it's normal. Besides, we are in contact with uh, official Kiev, uh, with uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. So we just move from the capital city. The rest continues. Mr. Ambassador um, Vova, I, I want to ask you about the difficult political situation that Armenia and all of Armenia's representatives are in. That is, Armenian foreign policy has always been limited to a very, very narrow space within which to maneuver. And it's always been dependent on relations between the global players being good. Uh, these days, I imagine your room to maneuver is even less. How do you do it in the diplomatic community? Uh, it's uh, very interesting to hear this question special for you and uh, this very professional question that you know uh, from your previous work about all these details, uh, how our foreign, mini uh, foreign policies driving and forming. Uh, now, uh, it, now it's not easier than uh, the years you uh, and uh, me worked together in foreign ministry. I should have said that um, at the beginning. Yes, there were many years when Mr. Garabedian and I worked uh, the together. The gases, the gases. Uh, um, uh, now uh, I will tell you that uh, we continue to have uh, good relations with uh, Ukraine. Uh, we do not want to connect the, this with uh, our relations with third parties. Uh, what we have done uh, during these days, our voting in United Nations uh, and other uh, some very important work uh, proves that we, we are trying to play only positive role in this conflict, uh, of course, our uh, foreign ministry mentioned stressed that uh, only negotiable uh, solution is needed uh, in this very difficult uh, situation. And now we are just following these very hard, difficult negotiations, which uh, continues ongoing these days. Um, so uh, we are in everyday contact with um, embassy with the uh, foreign minister of Ukraine. And uh, I should tell you that uh, we feel uh, understanding of uh, official Kiev of our position. That's very re reassuring um, because, well, certainly even the larger powers around the world feel themselves caught in the middle of things, let alone a country like Armenia would Again, very limited room to maneuver. Uh, let me also ask you about information sources. What is mm -hmm. your access to information about what is going on both immediately in Ukraine as well as around the world about Ukraine? Mm -hmm. Look, uh, uh, everyone knows that uh, the first victim of uh, the war is the truth. And uh, of course, um, sources of information are now two. One is stemming from Ukraine and second from uh, Russia. Both of them possess full information about what is going on uh, on the field, but they give, of course, uh, limited information to, to everyone. Of course, we are following also international media. Uh, we, as I told you already, are in close contact with the diplomatic uh, community here in Lviv. Uh, Foreign Minister of Ukraine is very friendly and sharing uh, information. Uh, so um, it's not easy uh, to have trusty 
uh, information about what is going on. But uh, nowadays, it's it's possible to to have information and. I would tell you uh, another aspect of our move and our decision to move from Kiev to Lviv. Uh, one of major aspects of that was um, ability to give information to our capital, to Yerevan. It was very, very difficult starting from uh, when War was launched to work and send uh, uh, information to Yerevan because of limitation that were in Kiev. Here, it's easier for us to work. Uh, it's easier to gather information, and uh, in safe atmosphere uh, where safety is assured, uh, more or less much more than in Kiev, it's easier to, to, to do what we uh, need to do. I understand. Let me ask my last question. I know it's late for you in Lviv. Uh, the 2020 war, Azerbaijan attacking Garapov, Armenians, uh, that left scars with, in all sorts of relationships. And Azerbaijan now is, of course, also in Ukraine. And uh, I wonder if the impact of the Armenian-Azerbaijani relationship impacts the work that you are doing in Ukraine and Lviv. If we uh, say, if I would respond uh, directly, no, uh, at all, because I have a lot to do here uh, during these very hard days in Ukraine. At the same time, of course, I'm following uh, the processes in our region. And uh, unfortunately, Azerbaijan uh, tries to use this situation and uh, uh, the circumstances that uh, Russia uh, is not very attentive, if I may say this word, uh, towards our region. and provocations, uh, especially in last day, uh, continue. Uh, offensive, which uses Azerbaijan, is not new for us. Uh, and uh, Armenia Foreign Ministry nowadays is very active in forming international community embassies uh, uh, about what is going on in, in the region. Uh, you know that uh, our foreign ministry is very active in, uh, in contacts with uh, neighboring countries these days. Our foreign minister made visit to uh, Turkey. Uh, it was also new developments in our relations with Turkey. Uh, there were some statements made by our foreign ministry on proposal uh, made by Azerbaijan. So processes are going on in our region and also very active uh, processes. And we hope very much that uh, it will be, uh, they will go on a positive direction. From your lips to God's ears, as we say and hope. Um, his Excellency, Mr. Vladimir Garabedian, Ambassador of Armenia to Ukraine. Um, Mr. Garabedian, Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure, my pleasure, I know, Sophie. I know you had to choose your words carefully, but I think you have given us a, a very interesting um, mm -hmm. picture of what your days and immediate responsibilities are. So I thank you again. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. all the best. You've been listening to Unpacking Armenian Studies, our new limited series called, that we are calling Ukraine, Armenia, and War. This is part of a series that interviews diplomats, scholars, journalists, politicians, to try to understand all of the various ways in which this war is impacting, of course, the whole world, the Caucasus, and certainly Armenia, and the Armenians of Armenia and Garapach. 
Please share these episodes with your friends and continue to listen as we interview others about the various sectors too that are impacted, including the economic and the humanitarian. Thank you for following us at the Institute of Armenian Studies. I'm Sal Pihaza. You've been listening to Unpacking Armenian Studies, a podcast series on the Institute of Armenian Studies channel. This episode has been produced by Sadin Habeshian. Music by Josue Gonzalez. For more from the USC Institute of Armenian Studies, go to the Institute's YouTube channel to hear dozens of talks by scholars from all over the world. You can reach the Institute at armenian at usc.edu and follow the Institute on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This podcast has been recorded at the University of Southern California Dornsife College of Letters, Arts, and Sciences. Thank you.